Hello and welcome to Daily Devotions here at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Vicar Jacob Garrison. Our reading for today comes from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 12, which are traditionally called the Beatitudes. And this is the Gospel reading for the Feast of All Saints. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This is a promise. This is a promise of what it means to be a Christian someone who knows Christ. That's why he ends the way he does. He says, who have been persecuted falsely on my account. The Beatitudes are all about Christians who know the promise of God, which is found in Christ Jesus, in his death, his persecution, and his resurrection. And we are not alone in this. These are the same promises that have been grasped by Christians even in the Old Testament, who were persecuted for the sake of the promises of God, the promises that he will take care of his beloved, that he will give them justice even though they are treated poorly now, the promise that he will have mercy on them even though the rulers now do not have mercy on them, that he will satiate their hunger and thirst, even though those who would be able to give them something to eat and to drink, maybe even just a cup of cold water, deny it to them. This is the promise that God gives to all Christians. Jesus is teaching his disciples this. He's teaching us this. That the life of Christians isn't always obvious to the rest of the world. Poor in spirit, meek, hungry, mourning. And yet these are the ones who still belong to the kingdom of God. That's what he's describing here. The citizens of those in the kingdom of God. And there are promises that will come in the end, in heaven, when we are released from the persecutions of this world. But yet there are also promises here now. You don't have to wonder whether or not you are blessed. You don't have to wonder about whether or not God is taking care of you and speaking his word for you specifically. That's what blessing means, speak a good word unto someone. Jesus is promising, despite any condition we may be in, that we are blessed. That we are blessed as long as we are clinging to his promises. And in fact, if we're clinging to his promises, not only are we blessed, but here now, we ought to expect troubles. But that our troubles are not somehow counter to the blessings, instead, in a completely unthought of way, they 
magnify it. They exemplify it. For we see these blessings and all of these states of these people being blessed most perfectly in Jesus himself, who doesn't care about the shame of the cross at all. He despises it and instead turns it into his glory, into his blessing that he can then give to all people. Through him, all nations shall be blessed. This is the promise that was given to Abraham long ago and still is with us today, regardless of anything. And so, when we read the Beatitudes, it is supposed to remind us against whatever it is we might be seeing or experiencing in our emotions that as Christians, in our often low state, we are, in fact, blessed. In Jesus' name, amen.